Hey guys, this is Anders with Adam Audio, and today we're gonna to show you how you can take a bedroom and turn it into a functional studio space. So consulting and working with a lot of studios around the country and here in Nashville, I'm sure you've seen a lot of spaces just like this one where someone's wanting to convert a very simple bedroom into a studio. So what is one of the first things you need to consider when you're starting that process. So with like bedroom studios or any type of studio space, first and foremost, we gotta figure out how's that room gonna be used. So like if you're just recording direct in instruments and you're not really mixing in that space, you're not gonna need to have as much treatment in there. You can really make it more so about the keyboards and the instruments that you're working on and rely on headphones more. If you're recording vocals or acoustic instruments, you're gonna want the room to be more well treated so that you can have a good sounding recording and have things translate really well. And then the same thing kind of goes for mixing or producing where you want to really be able to hear what's going on in your monitors. If you're not primarily working on headphones, then the treatment's gonna come into play more and really kind of suit and complement uh, the other gear that you have in there so you can get the most out of it and have a room that's really balanced and creative and productive. As a studio designer, you know that studios are more than just about the acoustics. Um, what are some of the things that you could see working really well in this space, for instance, uh, to really kind of enhance a creative workflow in a bedroom studio? First and foremost, with any creative space, you want to have the right feel and the right vibe for it so that it's you know, a room that you want to be in and that's going to promote being creative and, and productive and, and working on music. So having like the natural light like we do in here. You know, windows can sometimes be problematic from like an overall layout standpoint, but from a inspirational or creative standpoint, they're fantastic. Same thing with like having a couch or comfortable seating. And then also, you know, as we start to put more stuff in this room, getting the instruments and the things that you really rely on to create the music that you're working on in that room or in this space is super important. And just all the little things that make it comfortable and make it productive and inspirational so that you can be in here and really feel inspired to work. So now we get to this room specifically uh, and kind of addressing the acoustic issues in here. What were some of the things when you first sent over that diagram that were really sticking out that needed to be addressed? The first thing we wanted to address in the room was kind of figuring out the overall layout of it. One concern was potentially the overall dimensions of the room. It's 11 and a half by 12 and a half feet. So it is, isn't quite square, but pretty close. But looking at the overall like room mode analysis of that, things were pretty well distributed. So there's a nice even um, balance between, you know, kind of from mode to mode. We don't have any too many buildups or problems there. So that worked out well. And they're just kind of figuring out with the doors and the windows where we're gonna put the desk and the couch. Ultimately, the you know, having the desk facing the window, just overall feel wise kind of made the most sense and also allowed you to keep the couch in here and then potentially add in that piano. The other issue is the doors, just potentially being, you know, having two doors on one wall in a relatively small space can be a little bit tricky if you're looking to turn that into like a great mastering or a great mixing room. In that case, you might wanna look at having like freestanding panels in here as it's primarily a, a space to kind of create and record keyboards directed into the computer. That wasn't such a big problem. And the other areas kind of were think, as we mentioned earlier, was like the air conditioning. Uh, it's right above your head. It can be pretty loud. So we will uh, eventually take off that grate later today and then put a cloud up there as well. Uh, and that cloud will be spaced off the ceiling so it'll drop it down a bit so air can still flow in here. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll further help to make it quieter when you're at the desk and kind of start to alleviate a lot of those problems. So we've talked a little bit about the layout and how the desk is facing this front window here and there's also another window over here. And I personally like the natural light coming into the space but if someone did want to take care of some of the issues that windows cause, how could they go about doing that? Yeah, so there's kind of two main things there. One is isolation a concern, because windows in most houses or most apartments will be the biggest sound leak. So it's where the most sound is gonna come in from outside. If that's the case, you can either build kind of like a window plug, so it's pretty dense, heavy, kind of multi-layered, so like wood insulation, maybe some sort of mass loaded vinyl or rubber thing that you can really fit in there and seal off well. Or if it's just a matter of reducing reflections and so having a more, you know, being able to treat it just as you would the wall space, then it's gonna come down more so to how can we mount acoustic panels or acoustic treatment over the windows or partially over that. And to do that, normally you can either, depending on like the height of the window, you might just be able to install it above it. So like in here, there's no trim. So like yeah. you could just install a panel directly above that because there's nothing sticking out off of the wall. Or you could space your panels off of the wall, which alleviates the trim issue and makes the panels work better. And then if neither of those are an option, you could either use like a stand or a freestanding panel or actually suspend it from the, from the ceiling itself and have it hang in front of the window. So there's, there's several ways to go about, you know, treating the windows. And then uh, if it's an isolation issue and you don't want to hear the lawnmowers outside or sirens and ambulances, um, 
and you need to keep that stuff out of the recordings, then it'd be more of like a window plug or creating something specifically to actually seal that space off. And is there any, because I know a lot of people have this question, is there any sort of trustworthy acoustic fabric, like a curtain, curtain that could help or? From the standpoint of like absorbing higher frequencies in your room, curtains will be okay. And if you can get a heavier, denser curtain and have it really like bunched up on itself so it basically becomes thicker, mm -hmm. it can start to be a little bit more effective, but it's not gonna be effective, you know, below like a thousand hertz probably. Yeah. Um, and then from an isolation standpoint, it will have very little effect mm -hmm. at all. And so what's the plan to treat this space today? If you could just talk a little bit about what panels you're using, the sizing, uh, and why, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. So in here, you know, kind of focusing specifically on what you're gonna be doing. So mostly recording digital instruments or sounds direct into the computer and, and monitoring that back, but not really doing a lot of critical listening or mixing. We focused most of the treatment on this kind of desk area because that's where you'll primarily be working. Broadband panels on the side walls, and that will just help with early reflections, you know, give you a really nice stereo image, left to right detail. For the ceiling, we've got a broadband cloud as well. So it's like a six by four foot cloud cover the majority of this desk area in both above the listening position and your speakers, which is really important in terms of controlling floor to ceiling room modes and balancing things out. That adds a lot of depth of field and lets you hear your speakers, which is ultimately the goal. And then on the front wall, we'll have panels behind the speakers as well so that we can control reflections off of that wall and prevent them from then canceling out. And then lastly, we've got some base traps that we're gonna install in the corner. So those are like six and a half inch deep panels that'll straddle the corner so we can get a lot of air behind them mm -hmm. and really allow them to work at lower frequencies. So when you're here monitoring and listening back, you have a good representation of what things are actually sounding like and that everything's nice and balanced. So now we have the acoustics up and we've loaded in some gear. Uh, what do we have here today and what is really crucial to start making music right now? The things that you need the, the most to get started are gonna be your computer uh, and the software that you're using on your computer, the DAW or virtual instruments that you use there, and then an interface. Uh, and headphones or speakers. Mm -hmm. And everything from there is kind of a bonus. Like you, you could very much so start making music at a very high level that way. But you know, going diving a little bit more into that, the interface is kind of the heart of your studio. So it's gonna be the way that you get your inputs and your outputs. If you're recording a vocalist or an acoustic instrument um, or a keyboard, those are all gonna go into your interface and end up in the computer that way. And then for you to monitor, the, monitor that back um, or listen to playback through your speakers, that's all gonna come out of the interface as well. It's so like in this case, you've got the Apollo Twin and the Focusrite for additional inputs and outputs hooked up via ADAT. So that's great because like in a very small configuration, you have a lot of outputs and inputs. Right off the bat, you know, within a few pieces, you have a very powerful studio. I have set up the A4Vs, uh, which is our most recent line of compact uh, studio monitors with the new A-Series. Um, and what we haven't done yet today is really fine tune the positioning of the speakers and the desk and everything within this room. So could you give a little pointer to where should we put all of these pieces of equipment? So should we yeah. move it closer or farther away from the wall? Uh, and B, when it comes to choosing monitors for a space like this, what should you look for? First and foremost, like find something that you really like, mm -hmm. that you enjoy listening to, ideally something that's very accurate and true, and then find something that like physically fits the space of your room. You know, in a home studio, you don't wanna go crazy big and have like dual 12 inch woofers in there, but having a speaker that, you know, you, you can size appropriately. In this case, these are living on the desk. And so if we started to, you know, put a larger box on here, you're gonna run out of room pretty quickly. So like for a setup like this, where the speakers live on the desk, these are perfect. Mm -hmm. If you had your speakers on a stand and we had a little bit more flexibility in terms of like where they were in the room and where the listening position is, then you can start to go to a larger speaker box and that will allow you to turn things up louder, um, listen back with more headroom and more clarity at higher volumes. And then in terms of like actual placement in the room where the listening position is gonna be and where your speakers are gonna be, that's the most important thing in terms of getting your monitoring set up really well. So in any space, there's good rules of thumb, but there's, there's no real substitution for setting things up and listening and moving them. So in here, we're gonna slide everything forward up towards the front wall a little bit uh, and really get your speakers as close to that front wall as we can. One, because it's a smaller woofer, mm -hmm. and so that's gonna help put it in a position to drive more low end and kind of optimize the performance that we can get out of it, but also put your listening position in a really great spot in here. You know, a good rule of thumb for your listening position is to start like 38% of the room's length from the front wall, but it's very much so a rule of thumb. So you can start there, start listening to things, move backward and forward a little bit, and then also adjust the speaker placement. So in here, we're gonna push this up so we get your speakers on the front wall, 
but that's not always going to be the best place. In some rooms, those speakers will perform a little bit better if you pull them off of the front wall. There's always kind of a, a compromise there uh, in dealing with the additional low end that you get mm -hmm. when speakers are up against the front wall and then also dealing with uh, some of the reflections and issues that occur as you start pulling them off of that wall. So we've moved our monitors into place here. And uh, now I think the studio is up and running and ready to be creative in. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we'll be sure to respond to them as soon as possible. Um, thank you, Graham, again, of Music City Acoustics. And where can the people find out more about acoustics? On our website, musiccityacoustics.com. We've got a bunch of articles and information and then also videos that we've done, other videos we've done with you guys. Uh, we've got videos up on our YouTube channel now. And if you guys want any free acoustic advice, you can go to musiccityacoustics.com, fill out the form on there, and uh, Graham will send you some tips on how you can treat your room uh, the best. Like always, thank you guys for watching, and please like and subscribe to see more content like this.